This week, reading and writing are all about pollinators. Here we have a tiny butterfly on a wildflower, known as the wallflower. This is something you might go out and go on a hike and observe. Maybe you'll head out just into your backyard and take a look at some flowers that are there. Go out by your apartment building or on your property and take a look and see what plants there are that have active pollinators, which are more than just bees, remember? So pollinators can be bumblebees, butterflies, moths, flies, maybe even hummingbirds. When you head outside, the first day, you're going to be doing some noticing and wondering. Remember, everything you notice can also help you maybe come up with a question. So if you notice a butterfly on a flower, maybe that makes you wonder, does that butterfly like yellow flowers? Um, as you notice things, remember too, you can always draw a picture. Some things you might want to think about when you are looking at plants and flowers and thinking about pollinators would be which pollinators are going to which plants, thinking about what you can hear and see and smell. So write down everything you can notice and wonder. And then the next day, or you can do this in another order too, if this doesn't work out well for you on Wednesday, you're going to go out and collect some pollinator data. STEM time. So you're going to find a spot to sit in for about five minutes or more. You'll listen and look really carefully for pollinators. As you go, you're then going to write down the things that you see. Now, keep in mind that you'll have better luck if you head to a spot that has plenty of plants to look at. So if you're sitting maybe just on the sidewalk and there aren't many plants around, that might for this activity be kind of tough. So you might wanna save this for a time when you can maybe head to a park or go into a garden or go on a hike where there's lots of plants around. But so maybe you're sitting for a while and you notice um, some bees come by and you put a tally down. Oh, I saw a bee. Oh, I saw another bee. Oh, I just saw a butterfly. Man, you know, now that I think about it, there's actually a bunch of flies around. There's lots of flies just crawling all over the plants. Especially if you're not out at night, you might not see many moths and you might not catch many hummingbirds because they'll be a little nervous around you, but you never know, maybe you're by a hummingbird feeder. When you get done, you'll take a look at your tallies. In this example, the pollinator I saw the most of was actually flies. We often think of bees as big pollinators, but flies can also be big ones. The pollinator I saw the least was, in this case, moths. Oh man, Ms. Diggy, you're not gonna fit butterflies in there using this um, pen. Butterflies. <laughs> um, and then you might think about why that is. Oh, I actually already was. Maybe I could say, I think I didn't see moths Maybe I could say moths come at night. And maybe hummingbirds, birds are scared of me. Now remember, oops, um, that we are trying to practice our writing. So if I'm writing hummingbirds are scared of me, I wanna be sure that I'm trying to use my best spelling if I see the words right up here on the page, I can copy them down and spell them right. I wonder, maybe I could say, I wonder if flies like different plants than bees. Then bees. Man, this is really hard to do, you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to write with a stylus. Now, down below, I have a space where I can draw and make observations. Keep in mind, too, that this week I've shared some videos that are just all about plants and pollinators and, and also an art video that's about drawing butterflies and bees. So let's take a look at what this might be like, too. So if I'm looking and observing, ooh, maybe I see a bee on this yellow balsam root. Ooh, I notice a butterfly. Remember, a big difference between butterflies and moths. Butterflies fold up their wings, up straight up like that. They also don't have furry antennae. And then here we have a moth. So this one kind of laid its wings down flat behind it. That's more typical of a moth. Ooh, and this one's out though in the daylight. So moths don't only come out at night. Here's a bee that I might notice, oh, hey, there's a ton of pollen on the legs of that bee. Hmm, interesting. Now, this is one I wanted to include. A friend shared this picture with me. Can you see the pollinator? It's pretty well camouflaged. 
Do you see the green hummingbird? Isn't that amazing? It fits in really well. Now I'm also noticing, so this is a rhododendron bush. Um, if you give them some water, they can grow here. They aren't as common where we live just in the wild. You need to go to more, more wet forests to find wild rhododendrons. But I am seeing this as a bright pink rhododendron and that hummingbird is loving it. So as I filled out my information based on what I just saw, for example, if you can't go outside, I could mark down. I saw a couple bees, I saw a butterfly, I saw a hummingbird. I actually don't have anything of flies and I did see a moth. Okay, next up in work that you're going to do will be designing a pollinator garden. Think about what you learn in the videos we have for you. Think about what you learn um, from the reading this week as well as things you already know. You can also check out, check out our awesome Epic collection. It has lots about pollinators if you want some more information. And think about how you would design a pollinator garden. There are some cool things to put in there. Of course, lots of certain kinds of plants. Maybe think about the kinds of pollinators you want to attract and what plants would be good to plant there. Um, some other things that can be nice would be something like a bee bath. Just like birds kind of want water, many insects, bees, and other things need water too. So especially in a dry place like this, if you maybe fill up a bowl, put some rocks in there that the bees can land on, and keep a little bit of water, it allows the bees some place to drink. You can also consider, maybe you're not ready to have a whole beehive, but you can make a bee hotel. There's so many different kinds of bees. Some of them need little spaces like old logs and other things, which can be hard to find when there's lots of people around. So if you make a little bee hotel, it gives them a place to rest and sleep. So you're gonna be brainstorming some ideas, maybe doing some research for things you want in your garden. And then the next step is to draw out a plan. Maybe include where the plants would be, what other elements you would have. Maybe you're going to put a bee hotel. Maybe you don't like that idea, but you do want the bath. Design it up and explain what is in your garden and why. So that's an important part of the writing. It's not just a picture because someone might look at it and not really understand what everything is or why you included it. Why is that helpful to animals? So make a picture of your proposed garden and then also explain why it would be effective for pollinators based on what you've learned this week.